All right, you guys did your wheel lab where you're trying to describe the motion of a wheel rolling down an inclined track, actually a wheel rolling down two different inclined tracks. And I asked you for homework to make a graph of position versus clock reading for each wheel, but put them put both sets of data on one set of axes. So I'm gonna show you how to do that if you're using Google Sheets, because it's a little bit weird. Um, so here's some sample data. All right, I'll tell you right away, this is not what your graph is gonna look like because I just made this, these numbers up. Okay, so, so this, your graph will have the same axis labels and everything, but your curves or your lines on the graphs will not look like this. So this is our sample data. We've got the low, the low track here and the high track here. And I want to make a graph, like I said, of position on the y-axis and clock reading on the x-axis. But I want both sets of data on one graph. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of rearrange the way the data is. So... I've got clock reading in position. I'm going to take this clock reading here, and I'm going to copy this data into, oh, hang on, before I do that, I'm going to insert a column here, and you'll see why in a second. So if I right click or if I control click on this column, I can insert a column to the left. I'm just giving myself some extra space here. You'll see why in a second. I'm going to take this data, and I'm going to highlight it by shift click. I'm going to copy that data, Command C, and paste it right underneath the other clock reading. So basically, I've got all my clock readings in this column, right? Clock reading for low, clock reading for high, both of them are in this column. The reason I'm doing that, um, just in case you're doing an experiment where, I don't know, say you have even number clock readings for one data set and odd numbers for the other one, it's, then it works out just fine, okay? You don't have to be using the same values for your independent variable because that's not always possible. Then if you look, normally what I do is I'd highlight like this, right? If I just had one set of data, I'd highlight like this and grab my two uh, columns that I want to graph. Well, I, actually, I also want to graph the high position on the same axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, Command C, and I'm going to paste this down here. And this is why I wanted to make some extra space out here. So here's where the high data starts. I'm going to paste it there, and it puts all my data in there. So if you, if I zoom out a little bit, let's see if we can see it. There you go. So my data looks like this, right? So I've got one set of data there, and then my other set of data, the x-axis stuff is in the same column, but the y-axis is in a different column. Okay, This is just kind of the easiest way to do it. And then I'm just going to copy this name over to here. And there you go. So now, let me go back. So basically, what I want to do now is make myself a graph, or a, a chart is what they call it in Sheets, to make a graph. So if I highlight all the stuff that I want to graph, which is not only, ooh, I got lost there, not just the one set of data, but the other set of data as well. So you can see that I've got all of that data selected, right, low and high data. Then I'm going to go to the Insert menu and insert a chart. And there it is. And you can see that it's not really a very nice chart. <laughs> so now I go to the setup. Okay, so this, this stuff pops up here. If it goes away, double click on the chart and it'll come back again. So in setup, I don't want a column chart. I want a scatter chart. And that's pretty much all the graphs you ever make in my class will be scatter charts. And that's actually pretty good. Uh, what you want to make sure is the x-axis is the clock reading, and then the series will be your two um, will be the two columns that you have set up in that kind of weird. So here's one series, and here's the other series. So if you imagine series is what's on the y-axis, and then you have what's on the x-axis, then setting up your spreadsheet to look like that will uh, let you create a graph like this. All right, and now remember that we want to change a bunch of stuff, right? So first we want to change the chart titles. So the title is going to be position versus clock reading. Oh, hopefully you saw that I said I hit the customize button, right? So the customize button is where I'm seeing all these new choices. Setup is kind of where you get the kind of chart that you want or the kind of graph that you want and where you set up your axes. Right? Customize is where we change all the stuff like uh, axis labels and where we put a best fit line and things on there. 
right? So in this chart and axis titles, we can change the chart title. We can change the horizontal axis title. So the horizontal axis is clock reading. I wish it would just do this automatically. Seconds. Then our vertical axis title is position in centimeters. And there we go. And now the graph is looking pretty good. One more thing, we want to put a uh, put a best fit line on there, right? So where is that? That is in. Click that now without you guys knowing. In this series, um, in the series menu, and you can hit apply to all series. You want to put in a trend line. And there we go, trend line. You can choose the type of trend line. I'm telling you this because maybe your graph doesn't have a line on it. So then you have to pick another one of these things. All right, in this class, linear and power series will be the most common um, trend lines that you pick, linear and power series. So let's try, um, funny thing is if we click power series, it looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? Interesting. You can learn more about that in math class later on. But, but we'll pick linear. You might choose power series for your homework, I'm just saying. And then the last thing you have to do is the line is great, but it'd be cool if it, you know, if it found a slope and stuff for you. So when you click down here on this, so here's where you uh, have your series menu. If we go to our legend, after we put our lines on there, ooh, I lied, my fault. Trend line, linear, label, sorry, my fault. So not in that, it's still in the series. Let's back up. So back in this series, this is where you pick your trend line. What shape of trend line do you want? Is it linear or some sort of curve? This one is linear. Your graph tonight might not be. And then for the label, you're gonna put use equation. And that will calculate stuff from that for you. It'll give you basically the equation of the trend line that you put on there. Okay, and that is our chart. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do, I don't have the real estate for it in this little screen recording that I'm doing, but take this chart and drag it off of your data, right? Scooch it away, get it to some clean part of the sheet so that it's all sitting by itself. Cool thing about these is you can copy and paste them into your Google Docs to turn in for homework. Um, you can actually, for this assignment, you can literally just turn in this sheet. That way I'll, I can help you out with anything that you put in wrong. Cool? All right.